What I'm going to be ask, uh, asking the American people to understand is, number one, this is a serious threat. Number two, we have the capacity to deal with it. Here's how we're going to deal with it. Uh, I am going to be asking Congress to make sure that they understand and support what our plan is. And it's going to require some resources, I suspect, above what we are currently doing. Now for tonight's top story, the American strategy to stop ISIS. On Wednesday, one day before the anniversary of the September 11th attacks, U.S. President Barack Obama will deliver a speech outlining Washington's plan to fight the terror group. In an interview on Sunday's Meet the Press, Obama said he would describe how serious the threat is, but also said the U.S. is capable of dealing with it. J.D. Gordon is executive director with Protect America Today and joins us now from Washington. J.D., thanks for stopping by. So it seems like Obama is really, really responding to that negative attention he got when he said no strategy. Do you think what we're going to see on Wednesday is a comprehensive strategy? Hi, Anthony. Thanks for having me on the show. I think it was a wake-up call for him, uh, the fact that he had that mishap and miscommunication. I think that uh, he's going to have a good plan. I think he's going to unveil it on Wednesday. I think it's going to be broad and strategic in nature. The plan apparently is going to be in three phases. One is going to be ramped up airstrikes in northern Iraq or wherever ISIS is there. And number two is going to be intensified efforts to arm and also train, advise, and assist the Kurdish Peshmerga militia and the Iraqi military. And the third phase would be actually bombing in Syria, which I think you have to do because that's where ISIS is headquartered. So I think his plan is, is good, what I'm hearing so far. I just hope he doesn't have too many details in it because you never want to send the enemy a press release. So too much information is bad. But he's got to tell the American people what he's doing. Uh, so I think that uh, he's going to have a good balance and hopefully he'll get it right. I've been arguing in columns and on television that airstrikes fantastic. Canada should, should be involved as much as possible. You want to cut their knees out from, from under them, get rid of whatever means they have to do harm to us. Uh, number three, I want to talk to you a bit more about that. E even I, I think there's some complexity in it. But I want to go to number two there, to train, advise, equip folks in the Iraqi army. How is this not just being on the ground in Iraq again, helping them? Like there's an exit strategy to that point. It doesn't seem like there necessarily can be an exit strategy. Right. It comes down to how do you define ground troops? The U.S. has already a thousand ground troops there in Iraq right now. They're protecting the embassy in Baghdad. They're protecting the consulate in Erbil. And they're training, advising, and assisting the Kurds, the Peshmerga militia, and also the Iraqi military. So I think if they have intensified efforts, particularly with the Kurds, if we're giving heavy weaponry to the Kurds, also via our NATO allies, there's some tricky U.S. rules to that. That is, the central government in Iraq is in charge of it getting any weapons from us, according to our own laws here. So I think that if we're working with our NATO allies, there's 10, groups, 10 countries in the coalition in this group now. So if we're working with some of them to give the Kurds the heavy weapons they need, they need artillery, they need armored vehicles, they need trucks, not just machine guns and bullets. So I think if we're working towards that, uh, it could be a better than what we've seen in the past. Let's hope. But what makes you think that the same, I don't want to say mistakes that were made during Operation Iraqi Freedom and all the enduring time there, but just the lack of successes that was had during that time there that brought us to the situation where we are today, uh, do we even know really what the isolated variables are that guarantee we're not going to be in the same place five years from now, ten years from now? No, we don't, Anthony, unfortunately. You know, President Bush warned in 2007 that if we left Iraq too soon, there would be mass killings. There would be things like going on today. So he warned about it in 2007. I think that President Obama was just so focused on getting out of Iraq, he left a power vacuum there. And that power vacuum allowed ISIS to grow and be so powerful today, between 10,000 to 20,000 fighters. They're attracting these uh, jihadis from all around the world, including people from the U.S. and Canada. There was a guy, a young guy, a 22 years old, uh, Monera Mohammed Abu Salma from Florida. Grew up there, born and, born and raised there, grew up in a gated community, a middle class kid who liked basketball. He went over to Syria. He drove a truck to an army base full of explosives and blew it up. So any kind of loser out there in the U.S., Canada, or Western Europe, Westerners with Western passports are very valuable to ISIS. They're over there now training and, and they're fighting in Syria and Iraq. They could come back in, in the U.S. and Canada and blow us up here and do another type of 9-11 or carry out something like the Toronto 18 wanted to do. Okay, so part three strikes in Syria against ISIS in Syria. 
makes sense to me. The Islamic State, they're a caliphate. They don't care about these random borders, schmorders that Iraq, Syria set up. Little problem there, though. Iraq says, America, Canada, come on in, give us a hand. Syria, well, you've got Bashar al-Assad there. Not so hot about us coming in, doing stuff there. He's going to see that as a bit provocative. How, how do we deal with that? Well, I think that we need to have airstrikes, certainly, in Syria to, to get rid of our, uh, or at least degrade and destroy to the extent we can ISIS there. I don't think we should have any troops in Syria. That's the difference. I think we should have some troops in northern Iraq. Like I said, we already have over 1,000 troops there now in the U.S. alone. And I think that uh, if we put troops into Syria, though, even if it's a small amount, they'd be very vulnerable because Bashar al-Assad might bomb them, too. And so I think that uh, if you have a very small amount, just perhaps of spotters, some special forces, troops just to guide in weapons, to guide in the bombs if you need to, or to gather intelligence, that makes sense. But more than just a handful of troops in uh, Syria doesn't make any sense to me because they'd be targeted by ISIS and possibly Bashar al-Assad too, even though we're doing his work for him. Well, J.D. Gordon, I really appreciate the distinctions you've drawn there, and I'm really interested to see exactly what happens on Wednesday, how the different parties respond to it. Thank you for your take.